it's a way to escape. It's a way to experience things you wouldn't get to experience otherwise. Like high school. <laughs> I got to experience high school. Welcome to Books and Banter, a podcast about books. I'm Janine, a library clerk. And I'm Jess, a branch admin. And we both work at the Winkler branch of South Central Regional Library. In this podcast, we talk about books with our own twist. We read the first half of the book and predict where it might be going, and then finish reading the book and discuss the second half. There will be snark, there will be spoilers, and depending on the book, there may be references to violence, sex, and other adult topics. So if that's not for you, stop listening now. All right, let's get into this week's book. Today we are diving into the wonderful world of Gordon Corman, and we are reading A Semester in the Life of a Garbage Bag. When luckless Raymond Jardine becomes Sean Delancey's 11th grade English project partner, he persuades Sean's grandfather to pose as a long-deceased obscure Canadian poet in an effort to pass the course and win a vacation to a luxurious Greek island. This is a standalone book and was first published in 1987. Uh, Some info about Gordon Corman. This is, I believe, from his website. My writing career began virtually by accident when I was in seventh grade. The track and field coach had to teach English. For creative writing, he gave us total freedom to work on whatever we wanted for the rest of the year. It was February. That added up to a class period per day for more than four months. The result was my first novel, This Can't Be Happening at McDonald Hall. I sent my manuscript to Scholastic because I was the class monitor for Scholastic book orders and figured I was practically an employee. Seriously. Full disclosure, my mom had to type my book for me. It was a totally fluky and random way to launch a publishing career, but here's the thing. It worked. This Can't Be Happening at McDonald Hall was published by Scholastic when I was a freshman in high school and I was on my way. Hey, that works. There you go. And I want to say he's written over 100 books. It's got to be up there already, yeah. Yeah, so I uh, will admit I've only read one other Gordon Corman that I can remember. What? I know. Which one? Uh, Losing Joe's Place. I mean, that, that one's good. That not, one, Not the best one in the world, but it's good. But it really stuck with me all these years. I still remember. See, Gordon Corman is yes, good. It's memorable. And I, when I was reading this, I was really thinking, like, I can see why kids still love him today. Mm-hmm. Like, and this book, so... I have our copy of this book. It's in rough shape, people. I'm not going to lie. There is some very mysterious stains. It's well-loved. It is well-loved. This book has been read a lot. You can tell. So, um, yeah, and I know, like, I have a nephew who loves to read, and I know he's read a lot of Gordon Corman as well. I feel like my brother read him when we were kids. He is junior fiction YA predominantly, and honestly, 10 out of 10 would recommend every adult read him. Yeah. It, like... They are hilarious. I read them, yes. started reading Gordon Gorman books when I was like 10. Yeah. And I will still read Gordon Gorman books. When he comes up with new ones, I'm like, yes, please put me on the holds list. Yeah, I think I'm going to read some more because I am really enjoying this one a lot. One of my favorite ones is I Want to Go Home. Okay. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, although like a lot of the um, references. It's quite 80s. <laughs> it is very 80s. Like they talk about, I'm going to break your record collection. Mm-hmm. And uh, his sister going home so she could talk on the phone with her. Yeah. Like, kids don't talk on the phone anymore, people, let no. me tell you. I will say some of his books are being republished as updated copies. Okay. Um, so some of the references get updated. Well, they're updating that too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I prefer the originals. Yeah. Um, I think it's got a certain charm to it. Yeah. But, yeah, I know <laughs> I was doing a bit of math when I was reading this because he's talking about his grandpa's World War One uniform. Like what? World War One? No, surely he would have passed on already. No, no, that's technically correct because he's like yeah. eighty-two or something. Yeah, and he would have been if he was born in nineteen hundred. Like yeah, yeah. No, it's true. It's possible. Oh. So, yeah. Um, well, I've read this book before, Janine. Yeah. What did you think? <laughs> I so first off, I'm gonna say uh, Jardine. Jardine. I really hate his character, <laughs> but I also felt like I feel like he's one of those characters that you really hate but he just grows on you because he just he's doesn't, a fungus he doesn't go away <laughs> and he just like worms his way into your life mm-hmm. and your affections so I I'm not quite there yet with the uh I really love this character but you know, he's getting there honestly but. the grandpa's my favorite character <laughs> hands down <laughs> best guy ever my favorite was Howard <laughs> 
Howard is good too. Yeah. With his toothpick <laughs> poker and his hate of sack gem. Yep. <laughs> like all of his pranks. Like he TP'd the windmills and I was <laughs> like, that is so awesome. Like there's just so many things in this book. Like, what do they call their cafeterias called? Uh, Miami Beach. Yes, and then they like surf off the tables with yeah. cafeteria trays. And I was, this is like, what kid would not love reading this book? It's just fun. It is fun. Like, it doesn't take itself too seriously. No. His writing style is very approachable. Yeah. Like, honestly, it's just excellent. And even with the dated references, like, it's still. Like, the things that those kids are doing are things that kids today mm-hmm. can still relate with. Like, playing poker with toothpicks. Like, my cousins and I used to do that. Not with toothpicks. We would do, like, peanuts at Christmas or sunflower seeds if we were camping in the summer. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we used to do that, too. And, like, surfing with your cafeteria tray. Like, you know? Yeah. Like, like there's things that kids would still con- oh, totally. consider fun today, I think. so. And even, like, Sakjan is the fancy-schmancy new... It's supposed to be like an envir- environmentally system. friendly energy system, right? Yeah, yeah, kind of windmills, solar panels, the whole nine yards yeah. combined. And it never works. Mm-mm. I feel like kids today can still sympathize with <laughs> new technology that mm-hmm. the adults love and that never, never works. works. Yep. I know for myself when I was in high school, smart boards were the thing. Could, like, I swear the teachers spent a good 45 minutes of an hour long period trying to just get the smart board to work. Oh, I, I think they figured it out now because they still do use them. <laughs> I'm like, just use an overhead projector for crying out loud. We have things to learn here. But when my oldest started school and she came home and talked about a smart board, I was like, what the heck is that? <laughs> they were just coming in and it was painful. We were the crash test dummies for them. It was horrible. But yeah. that similar kind of, even if it's not technology, yeah. you know. But. Yeah. I, uh. I don't know how to say the name of the place in Greece that they're... Thermopolis? Thermopolis? Is that what it is? Something close to that. Okay. I I just, like, I don't know how to say this word, and I was going to look <laughs> it up, and I didn't. So every time I said it differently in my head. Is that Thermopolis or Thermopolis? Well, I think it's T-H-E-A-M. Them? Theampolis? Theampolis? Let's see if I, I don't can know. find it In here. my brain, it's always just been Thermopolis, but granted, that brain was developed at a young age also feel like if they don't get to go on the trip there where did i see it now uh sarah cruz again your finger was literally right on it yeah theamel theamel pos theamel pos <laughs> theamel pos i don't know i was gonna see if Octopus? i could <laughs> find somewhere that would like you know you can look it up and then it will say it yeah yeah for you. pronunciation guides i don't know why i'm doing this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but I forgot. Anyway, no. If they don't get to go on the trip, I'm going to be very disappointed. Honestly, though, like I don't remember if they do or not. It's been a while since I read it. <laughs> Many moons. That school dance just sounds like fun. <laughs> if school dances were like that when I was a kid, maybe I would have actually gone. <laughs> they had a trampoline costume or a trampoline contest, contest with costumes. They had yeah. a DJ. They had your make your own Sunday bar. Yeah, like. I, I would have actually gone to dances then. I don't know that any school dance is actually like that. Mine certainly mm-hmm. weren't. I uh, only ever went to one school dance. And then my mom said I was very disgusted because the boys were all drinking in the bathroom. <laughs> that's just disgusting as a whole, yes. <laughs> I mean, that's what you do in a small town also, right? <laughs> drink in the bathroom? No. <laughs> just thought it was you drink in the cornfield. Drink in, you drink as a young 14-year-old teenager. I will take your word for it. (laughs) You grew up in a small town. Yeah. I don't remember a lot of... I mean, granted, like, even house parties and stuff like that weren't really a thing. Really? No. Oh, my classmates were going to house parties. Not that I was aware of. (laughs) My classmates were going to house parties in grade 7 already. See, the thing is, I I had my group of friends, and... They weren't the house party type. They weren't the house party type. And the other ones, they probably did. But the thing is, a lot of that was very dependent on, can you get your parents to give you a ride? Mm. because farms well see the girls in my class dated older boys Mm -hmm. so they probably didn't need a ride because their older boyfriends had driver's licenses Mm. yeah or friends with driver's licenses or yeah yeah i don't remember anywho anywho back to the book not my scene but uh yeah we should have talked about the cover Yes, I was just thinking that. Um, I maintain the older cover, the one with crutches and kid with crutches and garbage bag, is much better. 
than the other one that has a kid with a paper bag over his head. Yeah. A paper bag is not a garbage bag. No, that is... Well, you could put garbage in a paper bag. You can, but good luck. (laughs) So the cast indicates that somebody is going to break something at some point in this book. I don't remember. (laughs) I should have read this book again. They would... Did well, you not? Recently. Did you not read it now? I, I read it now. Oh, like. But he hasn't broken a leg yet. Yeah, no, I know, but the cover indicates but that. But it's been a good eight years since I've read this book. It uh, the cover indicates that he will break a bone. Why would they put that on the cover if it wasn't going to happen? Because his life is a garbage bag. Yeah, but why would you put a picture of a character in a cast on the cover of the book? You mean? <laughs> yes. They don't make the covers relevant to what's in the book necessarily. What? Not always. Yes. It's one of the biggest annoyances that I have with books and covers is when they describe a character as with blonde hair and on the cover it's a brunette. Yes, that is disappointing. So I do not trust covers. Okay then. Yes. Well, I still maintain that somebody is going to break something at some point in this book. Especially when you look at the staircase behind said character. (laughs) Like, that's quite the staircase. Okay. (laughs) Well, I mean, if you fall down that thing, you could do some damage. (laughs) Why are you laughing Um, at me? Normally, I'm the crazy one. (laughs) What do you think of the Canadian poet, Galvin Gunhold? I think that... (laughs) On the first day of taxidermy school, I distinctly saw the eyes of a stuffed moose move. (laughs) Most best poem ever. You can tell I'm clearly literary, leaning, literally inclined because I said the most best. Yes. Uh, that is the sort of stunt that I would never have tried to pull as a student because I just know I would never get away with it. But it's a thing you have to do when you are Jardine. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I just... <laughs> I, that's the sort of thing that kind of bothers me because I'm like, no, don't. This is going to go wrong. Like when you can see that, that something is heading in a terribly wrong direction. I personally found the fruit fly one very fascinating. <laughs> Due to the tragically short lifespan of the fruit fly, college is not really an option. They don't make caps and gowns in that size anyway. <laughs> I may have read this book too many times. <laughs> I know. I was When I was doing my research on this book... Um, I think I came across a review that said that that was, like, the best poet ever. Mm -hmm. I was like... Hands down. And that was before I had read most of the first half, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... I mean, it's very impressive that they are able to write poems in the style of... (laughs) of him. I I mean, I like their inspiration method of just open a dictionary and go, that one. (laughs) Well, yeah, because that's really what, what it seems like happened with the original poem. No, you never know. No, I guess not, but... <laughs> it's taxidermy. You never know. It's true. It's sort of an odd topic for poetry. Yes. So. No. I mean, I'm looking forward to... I mean, we know in the summer, in the book summary, that his uh, grandfather poses as the long-dead poet. Yes. And that is sure to be entertaining because his grandfather is brilliant. His grandfather is nutso. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perune juice. Three-inch high letters on the shopping list. <laughs> Honestly, just read this book, people. It's yeah, fantastic. It read is. any Gordon Corman book. It's yeah. It is really I'm I'm impressed so far. I like his older stuff better, definitely. Yeah. You could tell he was young when he wrote it. Yeah. Because there's a distinct vibe of uh, I'm going to try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> but like his uh, Boots and Bruno series or McDonald Hall series, brilliant. Yeah. Bugs Potter excellent i also recommend losing joe's place because very good always yeah. makes me want to eat raw cake mix i know read it you'll understand that's the part that i really remember yeah because i just thought that was so genius yeah that and the hubcaps with the net <laughs> that and uh what was the other one? Oh, no coins please okay brilliant yeah attack jelly to... is genius i think i'm gonna have to get daughter number one into gordon corman yes definitely so she liked Winterborn Home for Mayhem and Mystery, or whatever the first one was. Yeah. She'll like Gordon Corman. She read both those books yeah. or listened to them. Yeah. So, yeah. She'll like Gordon Corman. I then. think so too. He also has Island, Dive, and Everest are There's series. three series, three books each. Very good. There's one about the Titanic. Is that one of. Uh, that one is. Is that one just called Titanic? It's good as well. Um, I found it not quite as good as the other okay. ones, but that. 
I also grew up in the age where the Titanic movie had just come out. Oh, it's yeah. The Titanic and Harry Potter are kind of in the same wavelength for me, where I was growing up at really when they were really, really popular, so mm-hmm. everything is so overdone. So I think that probably colors it a little bit, but... It's possible. It's... I mean, just read Gordon Corman, people. He's brilliant. <laughs> Gordon Corman, super fan. He won't eclipse Brandon Sanderson, <laughs> but... He's right up there. Everybody take a shot. <laughs> Put it this way. If Brandon Sanderson and Gordon Corman got together to write a book, oh, I would be goodness. standing in line. I would be performing a heist on the book delivery truck that to get my copy. That would be nutso. Brilliant. Nutso. Absolutely Can you brilliant. imagine? I cannot even imagine. It would be most excellent. Honestly. Most excellent. <laughs> Sorry. Just makes me think Are you mocking me? Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted's most excellent adventure. Yes. Anyway, we have to read the second half. <laughs> yes, we do. Sooner rather than later. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. We are back with part two of A Semester in the Life of a Garbage Bag by Gordon Corman. So, I finished this book and I turned the page and I was like, is that it? <laughs> no, they have to go to Greece. I need to, I need to I know. know. There needs to be a sequel so that I know what happens when they go to Greece and mm-hmm. after. Does his luck turn around? Who knows? I, I, it's a mystery. I know. I was just so... Gordon Corman needs to write a sequel 40 years later. I know. I read the last page. Literally, I turned the page and was like, <laughs> no, that can't be it. Oh, needless to say, I did enjoy it. <laughs> good. Good. No, it's a fun book. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm glad the windmill blew up at the end. Mm-hmm. I feel so sorry for the computer programming teacher. (laughs) It's just, like, things you wish would have happened at your high school but didn't. Yeah, pretty much. You know? Well, I mean, they start a hockey team just so that it's on their (laughs) school transcript. But there's no actual teams to play against, and they never actually have any rink time. It's just, we technically have a hockey team. Until the gym teacher gets wind of it, and then is like, okay, practice is this day, we're starting here, this is our first game, and they're like, what? I mean, to be fair, it does sound like pretty much everybody else on the team, except for Sean and Jardine, are actually quite interested in playing hockey. Yeah. So it's probably a good thing, but it's still kind of... I know. Oh, goodness. The things that they did, I, yeah. What did you think of Gramps? He, yeah, I I couldn't believe, I could not imagine my grandfather ever doing something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I was like, but he was just all over it and like with his yo-yo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and everybody loved him. He was rude and disrespectful, ornery. He's an ornery old man. And everybody loved him. And I was like. That's because they're a hoot. This this the first like TV um appearance that mm-hmm. he made, I was like, this guy's an idiot. <laughs> and in the end they loved him. I was like, these people are idiots. Um, <laughs> I just like his he finished reading the poems. Well I'm all out of stuff to read now. What do you want me to do next? I know. <laughs> I know. I'm like there's a couple old men that I know where I'm like, though that's definitely exactly what they would do. Yep. Absolutely. No, he, yeah, it was funny. It was just the one thing, sometimes I struggle with books where there's like a lot of chaos or a lot of like destruction Mm -hmm. or things like, like that, where you can just see that they are going in a bad direction. This is not going to end well. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't read this because it's too stressful. I didn't feel that a ton. Not as much as I thought I would in this book because there is a lot of chaos and a lot of, like, this is a very bad idea. Yeah, but it feels very much like a controlled chaos. Like it's, yeah, maybe. Like, yeah, they're creating chaos, but it's not destructive. Maybe that's what I, it is. I mean, the windmill blew up. Yeah. But their intent was not for the windmill to blow up. It was just for no. it to shut down. They just wanted people to experience what they experienced every day. Exactly. And so... But, I mean, the... Most destruction, I think, came from the parents' tech gadgets. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Those parents were nutters. They're just a little bit crazy. I yep. know. I, just, I mean, well-meaning. Well. But every new tech gadget, they had to have it. Yeah. And the the sprinkler matic or whatever it was, just flooding the neighborhood. I know. I, yeah, I know. For me, that part was sort of like, okay, 
How many of these tech gadgets have they had? How many of them have actually worked? The Argon laser. The Argon neon laser doing very well. Well, it was just a red dot on a... It was doing literally nothing. Mm-hmm. But, like, after a while, don't you just... You think realize after that many... Maybe we should stop with the tech gadgets. Yeah. Or keep it to non-essential tech gadgets. Yeah. Or wait until the tech gadget has been out for a few years, has proven its worth... Then buy it. No, I mean the sprinkler system company folded. Uh-huh. Like two days after. Uh-huh. So. And for good reason. Yeah. Yeah. Floods the neighborhood. Yeah. You should exactly. install in the Sahara. Do wonders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but there was a lot of that. Like, just ridiculous decisions. Very bad idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I liked Howard and his ongoing toothpick. Yes. <laughs> and uh, The toothpick poker was amazing. What was his name? Leland, oh. fling me some horizontals, baby. <laughs> <laughs> just like he's one of those where I'm like, I would never want to have to deal with this person in real no. life. No, because no, no. But just kind of sprinkled in, it just adds flavor. <laughs> I know. In the book, it was good. On a regular basis, no thanks. If he had been the main character, I would have been out. Yep. But for just sure, sprinkled in a little bit. I'm yeah, like, yeah, that's perfect. That's cool. And I remember, I think I said this the first half that. Uh, Jardine was going to be one of those characters that you would like by the end. Mm -hmm. I didn't really, like, he didn't grow on me in the way that I thought he would. He's an anti-hero in many ways. Yeah. Where it's kind of, like, you get why he's so pessimistic. Yeah. Because, having been there, yeah, you just expect life to keep on kicking you in the face. Yeah. He's very expressive about it as well. But at the same time, I'm I'm quite happy that he got his trip to Thermopolis or whatever it's called. Yeah. So... There's that. And he escaped the fish gutting factory in Syracuse. Yeah. I liked his uh, garage house. Yes. <laughs> that was like, cool. That's cool. I like that. And what was it that he called his mom? Commandant. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> why is he calling her that? Good pie, Commandant. I don't know. If my kids refer to me as Commandant, I'm like, yes, that is the respect for which I deserve. Thank you. And it seemed like they You're had acknowledging a... acknowledging my power. They had a decent relationship. Yeah. He and his parents. Um, I mean, but she like, just accepted the fact her son's weird. Yeah. No, I just, like, the thing about him that kind of got me was this guy is bullheaded and he does not listen to reason and he just does whatever without like discussion or anything he makes up his mind and he does it and i'm like no stop that's a bad idea why don't you listen listen to sean i think what you're missing janine is that he's a teenage boy i know you gotta remember that that pretty much just describes a teenage boy (laughs) i know but you know when you have to read one bullheaded decision after another it by the end i was like this enough I will say, I always get this book and another one of his books called Son of Interflux confused. Mm. Because it's quite similar, you know, high school thing. I think the main characters might actually both be named Sean now that I think about it. (laughs) But in the other one, there's a kid that in their art class, he paints camels and everything. Like every single one of his paintings, there's a camel in it. Perfectly good painter, but everything has a camel in it. Interesting. And... He was driving one of their teachers absolutely up the wall. He's just stop putting camels and everything. <laughs> so for their final project, he doesn't show the teacher until like the very end. Mm-hmm. And it's just all camels. <laughs> like just the whole thing is camels. <laughs> That's hilarious. And I'm like, that is brilliant. That is totally brilliant. So, I love that. I always expect camels to show up in this book somewhere <laughs> just based on the fact I always figure out which one's which. Yeah, no camels in this one. No, unfortunately. Um... Oh, I totally lost my train of thought. I mean, their teacher, knowing that I know. Gavin Gunholt's actually dead, but then also just going like, yeah, no, give me the stuff. You you guys get C's, but I just want to know what the heck you're doing here. Like, yeah. Th- this is going to be a fascinating project. I know. There's a point where I'm like, if more teachers were like that, I think there'd be, most kids would be a bit more enthusiastic about learning. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, you can't deny that what they did, although for the wrong reasons was quite impressive Mm -hmm. like not only did they write some of the most of the poetry themselves while in the style of gavin gunhold as much as one poem is a style they also then resurrected him (laughs) (laughs) and then brought poetry to the mainstream and like news anchors and whatnot were discussing the meaning of these poems like that doesn't really happen Mm -hmm. so that in itself is very impressive yes the final report is mainly stuff that they, you know... Made up. Created created themselves, but... Yeah. 
it's still quite impressive what they managed to achieve. Exactly. So. And that Sean's parents had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> that it, like, I mean, to be fair, they seem a little bit oblivious. Yeah, that is true. Like, they seem a bit the like, patchy on the head type. Yeah. But, but yeah, like, he became a phenomenon. Yeah. Almost overnight. Mm-hmm. And... And it took a while before anybody did a background check on him. I know. <laughs> that's wild. I know. The whole time I was like, "That's these kids are genius. Yeah, pretty much. And also a little annoying, but they're teenage yeah. boys. But so they're teenage boys, that's yeah. the thing. The one thing that did start to get me a bit was Cement Head. <laughs> <laughs> There's a point where I'm like, you're, you're just being mean to him now. Stop calling him Cement Head. But, but he then liked Cement it. Cement Head loved the name Cement Head to the point where he got it on his shirt. Yes. So it all works out. And yeah. that's the thing, like... With Gordon Carmen's books, I'm saying Gordon Goldsboro. With Gordon Carmen's books, overall, for all the pranks and everything that the kids involved pull, none of it's really mean spirited. Yeah. Like it's more of a, either they didn't think things through, they thought it would be funny, so they just went with it, mm-hmm. or it was kind of circumstances out of their control. Like it tends not to veer into the realm of bullying. Mm-hmm. It's more just general lunacy. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's funny, and it's, like I said at the beginning, something that you wish you could have been a part of in your high school experience, yeah, right? It like, just sounds like fun. It's fun. It's it's good old-fashioned fun. Yeah. I still want to go to McDonald Hall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd recommend just read all the Gordon, uh, Gordon Carmen books. I, brilliant. I think I will read some more after this when I have time. <laughs> I want to go home. Brilliant. Yeah. Love it. It's about a kid that goes to summer camp and spends all summer trying to escape summer camp. <laughs> and he is the most, like, dry, sarcastic kid ever. Nice. It is, it's, it's brilliant. That honestly. sounds relatable, actually. Yeah. See, <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a reason why I like the kid. <laughs> but, like, he spends his entire day just playing chess. And at one point, like, their camp counselors are getting fed up with them because they're supposed to, like, play sports and they're supposed to do all mm-hmm. this, you know, camp activities. Yeah. And it's like, no, we're going to be spending the day in arts and crafts. You always spend the day in arts and crafts. What are you doing in there? Well, we're building a salette. What's a salette? Oh, well, do you know what? Never mind. Just, I expect to see that salette by the end of the day. So they spend their morning in arts and crafts building a box. And in that box, they place a salette. And I'm pretty sure I'm murdering the pronunciation of this, but whatever. And the friend of the kid that's escaping is going, but what's a salette? Like, we don't have a salette. You made it up. There's nothing to put in this box. Of course. There's something to put in this box. So let us dirt. We're just going to give him a bag of dirt. No, no, we'll put it in the box. We'll paint the box blue. It's very symbolic. You got sky on the outside, dirt on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> and they present it to this counselor. And he's like losing his mind because you gave me a ball of, or box of dirt. Like these kids are horrible. They're mental. And one of the other counselors who speaks French is just losing his mind. <laughs> because that's French and dirt. Or dirt. French. Dirt in French. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's hilarious yes i can tell but yeah no it's and the kid is like freakishly good at all these sports he just doesn't play because he doesn't want to is he an indoor cat no okay he can do everything he just doesn't want to doesn't want to so when they eventually make him he like just they win every game they like everything was just they win Hmm. and the next day he's just like no i'm not i'm not playing again (laughs) (laughs) they also he uh they set up a, like a chess competition between him and another guy that's supposed to be really smart. I'm just ruining the book for you now. It's fine. And the only way they can get this kid to play chess is if they offer that he can be camp counselor for the day if he wins. <laughs> Absolutely smokes the guy. <laughs> so he gets to be camp counselor for a day. And how did that go? Very well. <laughs> the camp is like Algonquin camp run by uh, Eli Warden. So the kids call it Alcatraz run by the warden. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we should have done that book. Why didn't we do that book? It's brilliant. Maybe book. we don't have it. Mm-mm. We have it. Do we? Okay. I made sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, though, what you're trying to say is definitely read more Gordon Corman. Definitely read more Gordon Corman. And the thing is, too, like, he's got the very much the school hijinks, mm-hmm. like uh, Semester in the Life of Garbage Bag, Son of Interflux, um... McDonald Hall or Boots and Bruno series. But then he's also got like the adventuring ones. Mm-hmm. So he's got Island, Everest, Dive, Titanic. And Titanic. Titanic's fine. I'm, it's mainly just I'm over Titanic stuff. But Everest, Island, and Dive, 10 out of 10 would recommend. 
Love them. Okay. They're really good. Hmm. Yeah. Last year, I put up a thing on my Facebook asking for people to recommend books. Another parent recommended Gordon Corman because they read him with their kids. Mm-hmm. And they're like, these books are really great. And so they're not just like, I think adults can enjoy them as well. Oh, yeah. Is what I'm trying to say. I'm an adult. I enjoy them. My yeah. dad's an even more of an adulty adult than I am. He enjoys them. I Bugs this... Potter, Live at Nick and Annie. Brilliant. Yeah. I enjoyed this as well. I think I might maybe try and make Mike read some. He needs to get off the Louis L'Amour train <laughs> and onto something else interesting. I think he'll enjoy them, honestly. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't read these as a kid. Kind of. But yes, They would have been coming out right around the same time. Mm-hmm. He yeah. Been, like, Gordon uh, Corman was... Popular, well, like, 87, so... Yeah, my older brother read a lot of Gordon Corman. Yeah, it's multi-generational. Mm-hmm. Yes, his son also reads a lot of Gordon Corman, <laughs> my nephew. So, yeah. Um, but this was not his first, so... Mm-hmm. The thing is, they're just fun. They are. Like, they're, they're fun, they're entertaining, they move at a good pace, the characters mm-hmm. are decently developed. Yeah, they're not hard to read, and if you want something that's just really, like, easy, easy breezy, like, you can read in a day or a weekend or whatever yeah like it's just it's just fun yeah and that's the thing like there's a point where i'm like oh i knew i should be reading the edifying literature but i just want to have some fun because you know, life is depressing <laughs> here's what i think i think just read what you want to read mm-hmm. it doesn't matter like don't read books because of how they look to other people well that's the thing it's, like don't get me wrong I think there's merit in reading the classics, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. But I also think there's merit in not forcing yourself through the classics. Mm-hmm. Like one podcast I listened to, he, it's true crime, but that's irregardless. Um, he started rereading the classics that he read in school. Mm-hmm. And he was shocked to find he actually enjoyed them. Yeah. Because without having to dissect them to mm-hmm. death and like, hey, what is the symbolism in this and the meaning in that? You're able to just enjoy the story for the story. Yeah. You don't have to pick it apart yeah but don't force yourself to read the classics no because you feel that's what you should do Mm -hmm. if you want to read gordon carmen read gordon carmen you're still reading who cares exactly like also a graphic novel if you want to read a graphic novel totally fine go for it still a book if i bring home asterix my dad reads it yeah well if there's asterix anywhere near him he reads it (laughs) but like like, people who say that graphic novels aren't isn't really reading i'm like that's no that's not true reading is reading audiobooks is reading yep like I think a lot of times there's too much stigma around the fun books. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, what did you learn from that? Well, I learned about an island called Thermopolis. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, can it reading just be for entertainment? Why yeah. does it have to be... Like, like, there's enough depressing stuff with the news and mm-hmm. the wars and taxes and inflation. <laughs> yeah. Can we just read about a kid that thinks he's a garbage bag? Yeah. Like... The, the death of your favorite friend. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> for context, we're recording this like the day after uh, Matthew Perry passed away. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm in mourning. <laughs> I won't comment. Slight mourning. Here's I'm my... in the evening. <laughs> I'll shut up. He's my favorite friend's character. Anyway, that's really beside the point. But yes, I uh, to distract myself from all of the bad news, I read a book. Yeah. Because... It's a way to escape. It's a way to experience things you wouldn't get to experience otherwise. Like high school. <laughs> I got to experience high school. But you didn't get to experience high school with a windmill. No, that's and true. And a Jardine. <laughs> no, I did not have a Jardine in my high school. That's true. And I'm not going to lie, I still love the trampoline contest. That dance, <laughs> that school dance, I actually want to go to. Because that know. sounds like a blast. I know. And I then... will not because I'm old now and it's creepy. But <laughs> it would be a fun thing for a party. Yes, I know. I think there's a school dance at daughter number one school this weekend. She makes I it sound like you have favorites. I know. <laughs> no, she's just the firstborn. Because <laughs> that's better. Anyway, I don't think there's going to be a trampoline contest. I would be shocked if there was. So I'm pretty sure she's not going. Well, no, but she would if there was a trampoline contest. Well, no, she probably still wouldn't go, but... I would go then. <laughs> I will shampoo. Sham- shampoo. Shampoo. <laughs> Oh my word. How do you say that properly? Chaperone. Chaperone. Just can't speak. That reminds me of the time when my friend, who is a total city girl, was talking to another friend who grew up on a farm and was a farmer Mm. and was asking how his columbining was going. (laughs) I'm columbining columbine, so it's going splendid. My what? (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, combining. Combining? <laughs> yes. Anyway, Janine, do you have any fun facts for us? I do have some fun facts. <clears throat> I think you're all going to really enjoy these fun facts today, so let's just get into it. More than my chambroning. <laughs> Every garbage day, millions of metal garbage cans would make a huge clatter as the bins were emptied and thrown back down. Enter Winnipeg inventor Harry Wasilek, who, after the Second World War, began experimenting with a new material called polyethylene. Harry made his first plastic bags in his kitchen and supplied them to the Winnipeg General Hospital to line their garbage cans. He quickly moved his kitchen production to a plant. Around the same time, Larry Hansen, an employee at Lindsay, Ontario's Union Carbide plant, began to make garbage bags to use around the plant. Union Carbide knew a great deal when it saw a great idea when it saw one. The company bought Wasilik's business and began producing the garbage bags from the leftover polyethylene resin piling up at its Montreal plant. Another Canadian, Frank Plomp of Toronto, <laughs> was also working on the same idea in the 1950s. He sold his garbage bags to hospitals and offices. Three inventors working on the same idea at roughly the same time, and all of them Canadian. Scientists and consumers are now concerned with all the plastic garbage bags that are ending up as landfill. It may take more than a thousand years for some plastics to decompose. Part of the solution may come from another Canadian invention. In 1971, University of Toronto chemist Dr. James Guillet, I think, developed a plastic that decomposes when left in direct sunlight. Dr. Guillet's degradable plastic was the one millionth Canadian patent issued. Now someone just has to figure out how to make plastic decompose when buried. Microorganisms, probably a fungus. There you go. So that's the uh, history of the garbage garbage bag. Um, I didn't realize it was a Canadian thing, honestly. Mm -hmm. Winnipeg, no and less. Winnipeg, no less. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you got long, cold winters. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you also, have no idea. You start making garbage bags. And also when your boss suggests that you uh, make a fun fact about the garbage bag. Mm -hmm. And then you find out all these interesting facts. Fun facts with friends. Yeah. And so there you go. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, definitely. It's one of those things you use every day and you never mm -hmm. really think of where it came from or how it came to be. But I do find it interesting and you'll come across it quite a lot where you have the same idea being worked on in multiple different locations people have no idea that there's mm -hmm. other people working on this but it tends to be around the same time yeah um you'll also see that a lot in the movie industry which is why you often have movies that come out same time or relatively same time um that are like the same okay. and there's always like oh did these guys know about the other movie and yeah. generally not really yeah just a case of some something's something <laughs> there's something in the air <laughs> something sparked an idea yeah and two people at the same time mm -hmm. so no yep. isn't history fun yes it is should we leave it at that for today yes history of the garbage bag and the unfortunate name of plump <laughs> so that's what we thought of the book but those are just our opinions and we'd like to hear yours leave us a comment thanks for joining us for books and banter and thanks to our editor linda we'll see you next time